Hard and refried beans, good, and some decaf and some bacon grease, apparently. So we, we got a redneck holiday back here, grease, right? yeah. All right. So, you got to make your TIs? Yeah. So, once you got to make your TIs, redo your scatter plot from, from last time. If we had the scatter plot up last time. Just make sure you've got the scatter plot in your. And, and this is where, again, that little booklet I gave you guys comes in so handy. Because it. 99.9% .9 of that booklet is identical for every data set. The only difference is in what regression you do to drop the, the curve in. So get the scatter plots the same. I want to fire it up while you guys are doing that. Anya asked a very good question. She noticed that my data was in L5 and L6. Totally fine. Doesn't matter where your lists are as long as you tell your TI where your lists are. That's the important thing. This is what I'm getting. Oh, you can't see that yet. Is that looking like you guys? Not quite. No, not quite, because I took data out. Hang on one second. Ash, can I pick your brain? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They were all zeros and a one, right? So it looked like, yours looks like this, doesn't it? I'm just picking your brain. There was something that happened at the very end of class I had to remove data from. And we're going to talk about why in a second. There was a, and you don't remember this because it was Monday, it was a long time ago. But at the very end of class, I tried to run a regression and the calc said, boom, error. And I'm like, that's right. I, I did a quick fix and then got it to run right. I want to talk about that fix and why it happened today. But not just now. Just so you, now. You just want that curved. Right. And remember, we tried fitting a quad reg to it. Yeah. And we didn't like that for a couple reasons. Yes. For, what was the one reason we didn't like it? It went back up. It went back up. Christina, that's my, that's my least favorite, that's my favorite reason for not using that model. <laughs> yeah. It's because it goes back up and it makes it seem like we should be having people that are flipping 10 and 20 and 40 times and getting a lot of results. Yeah. So that's one reason. The other reason that I think either Brittany or Christy brought up was that it dropped below, below. the y-axis and became negative, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So we need a model that both doesn't go back up and stays in the realistic territory of counting. We, we're, we're counting how many people flipped this many times. And we, we, we discovered the model before we even knew what the model was called. Remember the equation we came up with together? That was a pretty good fit. Yeah, Jory, you got it. Y equals 186 times one half. Times one half. X. 2 to the X power, and that was the that was the fun part of this. Yeah, that's the fun part of this. That where the X is, when you have a linear model or a quadratic model, or as you'll see with Usain Bolt, a cubic model, when you have those models, those polynomial, as they're called models, the X is down in the same place the Y is. It's like if you were typing it in a computer, it would be sitting on the line. And it wouldn't be a superscript like this one is. So this guy right here is a very special kind of model. I'm going to put this word in your head right now. It's called an exponential model. Say that again, Ashley. So is one half of base? Excellent. Thank you, sister. Yeah, there are two, two constants in any exponential model. Some people will argue three. I say let's argue to I'll have two and control for the third one. So the, 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 the two numbers, and this is what I love about exponential models. I love them because both numbers make sense to students. Right, in a linear model, the slope makes sense. You guys know what a slope is. But the one intercept is kind of like, because it, it might not make sense. In a quadratic model, hardly any of the, the coefficients make sense. The first one's the acceleration constant, the second one's the linear constant, and the third one's the initial condition constant. I just got done saying that. You're like, God, I wish there was actually food back there. Because your brain's already tuned off when I start saying coefficient, right? But you guys know exactly what the 186 and the 1 half stand for. Ashley has correctly identified them both, or uh, uh, the one, why she called it the base, right? So this is the base. That's the, that's the mathematical term for what that number is. Now you've heard that word before. You've heard that word before. What I've, I've created a new term for it that's less mathematical, if that's okay with you guys. I call this the maintenance percentage. Uh, that'll make more sense as we go through today. I call it the maintenance percentage. The reason I call it this 
is because that fraction that's in there or that decimal that's in there or that percent, because that could be a percentage, right, 50%, that tells you what's happening as X changes. What's happening to your data as X goes up by one, by two, to two, to three, to three, to four, to four, to five? What's happening to your data? It's being multiplied by one. Yes, ma'am. Your data is being halved. Is it being exactly halved necessarily? No. Average. You, it's, say that again. It's averaging a half. It's averaging a half. So that's why I like calling it a maintenance percentage because it's actually letting you know what's happening to your data with each successive, with each successive step. It's being halved. And if we start changing those percentages, you start changing the behavior of your curve. And we'll see more and more of those as we go through your day. Those are super fun. And answer me that question, Amber. Huh? You don't have a question. I'm sorry. I misread your face. I thought you had a question. You guys are exceptionally close today. It's kind of fun. I'm just I can't. Hi. Hi. No, it's all good. It's all good. Amy, go. When you did the uh, over here, you had two going off at like this theoretical. Yes, we'll get back to that. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that one. This is still theoretical right now. I wanted to talk theoretical to make sure we picked up any loose ends from the world of exponents that you may have lost in Math 65, Math 95. What's this number here? What's that 186? The, say that again. Mayor Shell, thank you. That's your, can I call it a different number if that's okay? Can I call it your starting amount or your initial amount? Can we just call it that? This is your starting amount. So in other words, 186 of you flipped coins on Monday. And then we were watching what happened after each successive flip. Watching what happened after each successive flip. In our model up here, the x is the number of flips. x is the number of flips. And y is the people remaining after x flips. Now that's why I like, I like instituting I like instituting the x equals zero element up there because it shows you the start. It shows you the start, and then we can go from there. We can go from there. Once you're satisfied with these terms, oh, you might not be satisfied. Once you've made peace with them, go ahead, show. Say that again, y equals the people what? Number of people remaining after you flip the coin x times. So if I flipped it four times, the graph has turned itself off right now, but if you flip four times, all you got to do is go to where x equals 4, and it'll point the y value. It'll tell you how many people are still flipping. Oh. That's all. Remember, that's why you make models. You make models to tell you the behavior of a system. In this, if this is your system, I just moved. I thought that you said. Say that again. I thought on Monday you said number y was number of trials we saw x flips. Until it's the same thing, okay. potato, potato. It means the same okay. thing in English, right? Leave it, leave it, leave it, that's fine too. Okay. Yeah, it, it's the number of the number of people remaining, number of times we saw. I mean, it's all the same okay. idea. You got it, Christina. It's just a different, 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 different sentence. Different verbiage. Okay. I can't remember anything from five minutes ago, little forty-eight hours ago. <laughs> but that's that's the idea. Each of you were doing trials, so it's the number of trials left after X flips, number of people remaining after X. I'm talking about the coin flipping or the people doing the flipping. It's okay, the same. same thing. See, does that make sense, potato, potato? Good, yes, apple, apple. Good, thanks, sister. <laughs> now, now that you've got your model, did you graph your model with your data and see how it looked? You can say no. We can do it right now. You, what kind of, you want exponential count? Let's put that equation in your Y1 and graph it. 